What is kyphoscoliosis? Scoliosis is a structural spinal condition that involves the development of an unnatural sideways bending curvature. A scoliosis curvature uh, doesn't always just bend, but also turns, making it a three-dimensional condition. And the rotation is typically into the concavity of the scoliosis. Kyphosis refers to the spine bending excessively to the front to back position. And these kyphotic curvatures typically means the person has become, developed something called a hyperkyphosis of the thoracic spine meaning typically in the mid-back. And it's simply referred to as either hyperkyphosis or just kyphosis. When a person has kyphoscoliosis, it means they have both. They have an unnatural sideways curvature and then they have an increased front to back curvature. These both things are present. And when the spine has an unnatural sideways bending curvature with rotation and this front back unnaturally large curvature simultaneously, this kyphoscoliosis can be very difficult to manage and treat because we're dealing with multiple components of a, of a complex problem. Now, when we look at symptoms that are associated with kyphoscoliosis, the first thing we're going to notice is going to be postural symmetry. We're going to see significant rounding forward of the upper body with an asymmetrical uh, torso from the front uneven shoulders, uneven rib cage, uneven waist, uneven hips, and this excessive rounding in the mid back. Postural changes are the most common things that we tend to see that can be bring on a diagnosis of a kyphoscoliosis. In addition to postural changes, we can see changes in gait, we can see balance changes, we can see coordination, proprioception. These all things can be affected because the bigger these curves or misalignments become, the more it affects body awareness. Particularly when this is left to become severe or untreated, this kyphoscoliosis can lead to muscle weakness, fatigue, and pain, which is definitely more common in adult patients. It can lead to breathing restrictions because scoliosis and kyphosis become very rigid. It can lead to reduced appetite and even neurological symptoms like numbness and radiating pain. So when you look at kyphoscoliosis, if there is a positive postural evaluation, the very next thing that's typically performed are going to be a physical exam and possibly x-rays. Now, physical examinations typically involve something called Adam's bending test, where the patient is bending forward and they're looking at the symmetry of the person's spine while they're bending. And the reason why they haven't bent forward because it exaggerates any type of rotational misalignment. And if they look for any type of asymmetry in the rib cage or in the waist or in the shoulders while they're bending forward, or they see an excessive amount of bending when they bend forward, the next thing they would never recommend would be a set of x-rays. And x-rays are needed to determine the actual cob angle and where the scoliosis is measured. And it also can be looking at something called an angle of trunk rotation. And it can also look from the side, look to see if there's any excessive kyphosis or any kyphotic curve that's developing. Now, when we look at kyphoscoliosis, we definitely diagnose it in severities. And unfortunately, each type of curve is accessed separately, meaning the scoliosis is developed, is diagnosed as a mild, moderate, or severe scoliosis, and the kyphosis is developed, is diagnosed as a mild, moderate, or severe kyphosis. You can have a mild scoliosis with a severe kyphosis. You can have a severe scoliosis with a mild kyphosis. So therefore, the two things are not equated in their assessment of severity. Mild uh, scoliosis is anything 25 degrees or less. 25 to 45 degrees is considered a moderate scoliosis. Anything greater than 45 degrees is considered severe. When we look at kyphosis, a normal kyphosis is 40 degrees. Once you start getting over 50 degrees, it's considered to be kyphosis. Between 50 and 60 to 65 degrees is considered mild. When you go from um, 65 to about 80 to 90 degrees, it's moderate. When you break 80 to 90 degrees, they consider that to be a severe kyphosis. Process. So when we look at these two things, you diagnose each one individually. Somebody, so again, somebody could have severe of one and mild of the other, or both severe of both areas. Now, when we look at kyphoscoliosis, we want to make sure that we treat it very similarly like any other structural condition. And the way of treating a structural condition in any patient is to develop a unique treatment plan that's based upon the patient's key variables, severities, age, where the curve location is, and of course, how flexible the spine is, and how, what the patient can tolerate in terms of improvement. Normal conservative treatment is multimodal, meaning we're using many different types of treatments and we integrate
integrate them into a very specific program. I like to call them a chiropractic-centered approach because the goal is to reduce the size of kyphosis and scoliosis in a corrective manner to reduce the effect that the scoliosis and kyphosis is having on the body. So it typically combines very condition-specific chiropractic care, different types of therapy and rehabilitation in the clinic to help reduce the size of curve, different therapies and rehabilitations that's normally done at home, like home therapy and home rehabilitation. And last thing is corrective bracing to help remodel the torso and make the body look more symmetrical. If we could perform all these all these things in a very corrective manner and stabilize that kyphosis scoliosis from worsening and also holding the reduction, we can be very successful in mitigating the progressive nature of these two problems. Now, in the experience, in my experience in dealing with kyphoscoliosis, it can be very complicated because one condition worsens the other. And as these two things worsen, especially as we deal with older adults, it can get very, very progressive and lead to lots of disabilities and issues. So we know kyphoscoliosis, that the sooner we treat it and the greater we can reduce it and the smaller we keep it, the more likely there is to be a positive outcome for that person. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.